resurfaced. It seems as if James Gunn in the past couldn't keep his mouth shut. And this quote-unquote brilliant filmmaker who brings in a lot of attention at the box office nowadays, he said something 11 years ago, just like he did something else nasty 11 years ago, was talking out of his ass. And basically he says the same thing everybody else in the internet says that, uh, you know, for Batman 89, that it sucked, soundtrack sucks, Batman came with his neck. I'm like, you're saying nothing that any fucking asshole on the internet didn't know what to say. The, the thing that pissed me off was like he said it was quote unquote poorly written. I'm like, dude, did you even see the fucking movie? I mean, like, god damn. The movie was a timeless classic that lasted fucking generations, and your films will barely last a few years, if anything else. So here he is talking shit about the 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 Tim Burton Batman. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? I think most of us have seen the Tim Burton Batman one multiple times over and has virtually no real problem with the movie. Um, like, like, actual problem with the movie. So, what the hell are you talking about? Now, let's go with your movies. Guardians of the Galaxy and... Brightburn and Scooby-Doo? Superhero movie, superhero movie, goofy comic book movie. You shouldn't talk about writing. Because your original Guardians of the Galaxy... Um, wasn't there a forced love story between Gamora and Star-Lord with the particular characters on a starboard looking at each other in profile style about to make out? That is cliche as fuck. You get two characters of opposite genders on a starboard looking at each other. It could be a starboard, it could be like a porch, it could be a balcony, same thing. Looking at each other with like a virtually blank background about to look at each other and kiss. And it was so cliche, I'm like, oh god, here we fucking go again. Uh, so, and then I'm like, oh my god. And if this will they won't they thing with uh, uh, Mantis and Drax, even though you know they won't because they're brother and sister kind of thing. I'm like, I don't fucking care, bro. And then we get Peacemaker. I couldn't last one episode of Peacemaker. It was so. Warner Brothers Discovery, when it comes to the representation of the characters, I was like, oh my god. And then, like, the opening credit screen, like, look at me, look at me, with the big opera-looking number in there, I'm like, oh my, I was rolling my I'm like, what the fuck is this shit? And then, like, the dad's really a bad guy, I'm like, oh, whoop the fucking dude. Okay, who cares? Thank you. We get Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Um, I was not a big fan of this movie overall. I had a f fine ish time with it, but I, I was like, I was pointing at the direct, the problems of them right there. These movies that you're making here are made for idiots. They're made for new people. They're not made for people that actually know cinema. When I saw Volume 3, I thought, like, in, in the beginning, I was like, the first thing I, the, the, the first big red flag was Cosmos the Dog. Uh, he had a thing uh, with, uh, what's we what's called, uh, what's this character's name? Um, you know, you know, the Whistler guy, the Whistler guy, I forgot his fucking name. And Cosmos was telling Whist uh, Whistler, you know, James Gunn's brother, uh, he was telling, uh, Whistler's bro uh, sorry, the director's brother, like, uh, call me a good boy. That was, that was a big red flag right there. That is so fucking cliche. In the very beginning of the movie, say this, say it, say it, say it over and over again, and then, of course, the guy won't say it in the beginning, and at the very end of the, the, end of the movie, he does say it. I'm like, oh, my fucking God. And when he did say, it in the, in, did say it, did he think anybody in my theater clapped? No. Because they knew that shit was going to happen. Full fucking packed house there. No one cared. I went to go see it twice, because I had to, I'll put it that way. And, uh, yeah, no one clapped either time. It was different theaters, different area. No one clapped. No one cared. Oh, you finally called me a good boy. Oh, no one cared, bro. No, nobody gave a shit. Um, I don't. Uh, and what's his what's his name? Um, Adam, uh, the Golden Adam guy. I forget his fucking name. I'm so fucking frustrated. The the a Adam uh Adam Warlock. No one cared when he came in. No one cared when he when he became good. No, no one cared. No reaction. Nothing. 
the action sequence uh, near the end with the slow motion and the end of Guardians Volume 3. I can hear a pin drop during it and after it. When it was over, I think like one person clapped. Congratulations. It was so dread. So, I don't want to get started on how lame his filmmaking style is. But let's take a look at Tim Burton's movies that are actually timeless classics and see how many you recognize. People still talk about these movies today. So, I don't want to hear shit about bad writing or bad filmmaking when your movies are absolute bizarre, dude. Basura. I gotta respect the culture. Your your films are basura, but yeah. Tu película es basura. I roll my eyes whenever he gets a fucking movie. Uh, Superman Legacy. You, you all know it's gonna be mid. We all know it's gonna be mid. Based on the track record, it's gonna be mid, bro. So, yeah, what do you guys think in the comments? Oh my god. Bad filmmakers, him saying that. Yeah, right.